So Bitcoin is such a complex system that I'm sure some of you have been trying to figure out why Bitcoin has value and what differences the price, right? And the objective of this presentation is to shed light on this important topic by reasoning from first principles to help you understand the main value proposition of Bitcoin. So what is first principle reasoning? It's simply breaking down complicated problems into basic elements. This method is very similar to how you would get different puzzles, uh, pieces of a puzzle, and put them together to get the big picture. And this is exactly what we are going to do with Bitcoin today to enlighten you on why Bitcoin has value and what influences the price. So now let's dive into the main elements that together represent the key ingredients of the main value proposition of Bitcoin. Scarcity, minimize trust, unforgeability, censorship resistance, divisibility, portability, and multi-sided network effect. I know it's a lot of net, it's a lot of characteristics, but don't worry, we are going to cover them step by step. So number one, scarcity. As we discussed in previous webinar episodes, if you attended, Bitcoin is a scarce asset because it has limited supply of 21 million, which is predictable and decreasing until the year 2140. Two, minimize trust. The supply of Bitcoin is to some extent decentralized among miners around the world, and therefore the supply does not depend on traditional monetary and fiscal policies from a central authority such as a central bank. Three, unforgeability. The rise, the, the use of private key, uh, you, with the use of private key, you uniquely sign and prove your ownership of Bitcoins, which prevents counterfeits. And the best analogy to understand this is a private key is to Bitcoin while a secret code is uh, to a safe where you store your cash or precious metals. Four, censorship resistance. So as we mentioned before, the supply of Bitcoin by design does not rely on a central authority, right? So this also applies to how Bitcoin transactions are verified on the blockchain because there is no human intervention deciding whether a transaction should be allowed or not. And once the transaction is confirmed, it is irreversible. However, as we discovered in a previous webinar episode, when you use Bitcoin and crypto exchanges, you may not be able to open an account if they impose restrictions in your country. Five, divisibility. Bitcoins can be divided down to 100 millionth of a Bitcoin, which makes it very suitable for microtransactions and to buy Bitcoin with very small amounts. Six, portability. Unlike commodities like Bitcoin, like gold, sorry, uh, that need in some cases large physical storage, Bitcoin does not enforce social contact for storage because billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin can be stored in a simple USB key such as Ledger. And in today's context, with social distancing restrictions, this makes Bitcoin incredibly easy and safe to transport and store. Seven multi-sided network effect. So Bitcoin shares the network effect property with the telephone system and the web. In fact, Bitcoin attracts different categories of participants, miners, developers, entrepreneurs, and users. In other words, the more people use Bitcoin, the more valuable Bitcoin is for everyone else. So these are the seven ingredients that makes the secret source of Bitcoin success. So now you must be wondering, but what drives the price action of Bitcoin, right? Well, the price action of Bitcoin is simply influenced by supply and demand. On the supply side, you know that there is a limited supply of 21 million Bitcoins, but uh, Bitcoin is more scarce than we think. In fact, it is estimated that between 1.5 and 6 million Bitcoins are either lost, stolen, or inaccessible as people, as people may have lost their private keys, or in other cases, unfortunately, uh, some Bitcoin orders passed away. And on top of that, there are Bitcoins kept by miners and long-term investors who will not sell their Bitcoins anytime soon. On the demand side, the main influence is market sentiment. But as we have seen previously, Bitcoin attracts different participants, developers, 
entrepreneurs and users besides miners, right? So on the demand side, number one, developers. As Bitcoin relies on open source software, any developer can fix the bugs. And as a matter of fact, two years ago, the Bitcoin software experienced the most dangerous bug in history. It was an inflation bug that could have destroyed the scarcity of Bitcoin. And fortunately, the issue was solved with the utmost security and privacy and eventually didn't impact the price of Bitcoin. Two, entrepreneurs. Besides developers, there are entrepreneurs like 21 shares building products um, in order to make Bitcoin more accessible and easy to use and most importantly, safe to store. Three, Bitcoin attracts users uh, that buy goods and services or invest in Bitcoin. And on the investment side, as you may know, there are retail investors and financial institutions. So on the final note, there will be only 21 million Bitcoins for a growing population of 7.8 billion people today. And the creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, described the network effect perfectly in this quote. As the number of users grows, the value per coin increases. It has uh, the potential for a positive feedback loop. As users increase, the value goes up which could attract more users to take advantage of the increasing value